brothers and sisters in the Lord, you are welcome to day five of this special week. Stewardship Revival Week. How you can be dynamic and faithful steward in order to receive blessing and power from above. The sermon of today is entitled How to Walk and to Keep on Working. In fact, Managing time and keeping the Sabbath. Managing time and keeping the Sabbath. God has given us six days to walk, not to sleep, not to stay in heart home without doing anything, not to be lazy, but to walk, to do something and to be productive. Then the seventh day is to rest, to worship Him, the Sabbath day. What do we do with our timetable? How do we plan? How do we execute our timetable? How do we do it? Are we busy again on Sabbath? Is it the time that we decide now to walk? My brothers and sisters, to know more about how to manage our time, how to worship our God on Sabbath, let's listen to Pastor Uche Bue from Mainland Conference. Seventh-day Adventist Church, if you give us more information, by following what will be said, we'll be faithful steward before our Lord. Let's sit down. Let's listen. Let's follow. And let's practice what we'll be hearing. May God bless all of you. Amen. It is indeed a very great privilege to stand before you this day to present the sixth of the 2023 week of Stewardship Revival. A key text that has been selected for this topic is selected from John chapter 9, verse 4. And it says, I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can walk. Our topic today says managing time and keeping the Sabbath. Shall we pray? Father divine, we come before your holy presence this day. We ask that you take charge of today's program. May you speak through me that the audience will be edified. That all of us shall see you even as we discuss your words today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Managing time and keeping the Sabbath. We have received in our hands a very big work and responsibility of managing time to manage well the precious and great resources of time given to us by God. It is a great task. We need to manage time, manage finance, manage self, manage talents and temple and all the things that God has given to us as our creator. This obligation is clearly noted in Psalms number 100, stanzas 1 through 3, when the psalmist says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord. Serve the Lord and come before his presence because it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Brothers and sisters, even Apostle Paul and joins us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. By implication, we are to worship God in the use of our talents, resources, and time. We need to talk about time as a gift from God because no other person would have given us this wonderful gift except God. Unlike the other gifts, friends of God, talents, treasures, our resources are located to us by God in his own way. But time is common to all. Other resources are based on our ability as recorded in Romans 12, 6 through 9. The financial blessings are as God gives or apportions. However, God has given each and every one of us Equal amount of time, a 24 hours time. Oh, what an impartial God. The Hebrew word, yom, 
which is used for day in Genesis chapter 1, always refers to a 24-hour period when the world is modified by a definite or cardinal number. It shows a 24 literal hours of a day. According to Bren Katerman, Peterson is telling us that the day does not start when we wake up. No, we enter the day sleeping, resting, unaware of God, of what God is doing as we start the day. The reference to a day in Genesis chapter 1 is a literal 24-hour period. That is a gift of time each day for the entire week. But we are to wisely apportion it for the week, for the family, for work, for self, for rest, and for whatever time we want to use a portion of this 24-hour time for. No wonder Peter Drucker observed that time is the scariest resources, and unless it is managed, nothing else can be managed. What does this mean? Time is a very scarce resource. If you don't manage it well, then you will not be able to manage the day and other things that happens around your life well. I want to remind you that you need to plan your time, prioritize what you do at every given time. It is the opportunity God has given to you as a human being to know how to use the 24 hours he has given you in a day and the days he has given you in the week and the year to know how to use them in such a way that you will be able to achieve that which is expected of you. Let's talk about prioritizing our time. Prioritizing, friends of God, I must walk the works of him who sent me. Why it is day? The night is coming when no one can walk. There is the, this urgency to put to work that time that God has given to you. Tomorrow may be too late. There may not be any other opportunity for you to do what is expected of you. Now and this time is the appropriate time. And therefore, you need to sit down. And these 24 hours God has given you in a day, you need to prioritize them put them as a matter of you know, priority what is expected of you each day. Jerry Paza, the former president of the North Pacific Union, captures this this way. He says, leaders must have an intentional ministry. What does it mean to have intentional ministry? You must have a vision, you must have the roadmap, and you must allot this year vision to time. You need to learn how to manage your time. If you manage your time very well, you will be successful. Let me remind you as a student, there are times for you to read. There are periods that have been allocated for each course you are taking. And there are times for you to read on your own, to go through all those things that have been taught in a the class. There are times for you to do your assignments. There are times for you to sit down. There are even times for you to sleep and have rest. There are times for recreation. All these things are made in such a way that if you use them very well, you will come out an excellent student. If you use the time you are supposed to read to gossip, use the time you are supposed to read to while away, if you use the time you are supposed to do work to play, let me tell you, maybe in the night when you are supposed to rest and get refreshed, you may be forced to use it to work, and it will impact on your health. God wants you to prioritize your time and use it accordingly. Edgar Mills says that the intentionality here is purposely directing one's life as much as possible rather than allowing it to be determined by external pressures. You have to sit down and allot your time. You don't allow anything that comes around you to determine how you live your life. You have to take charge of your life and what surrounds it. Don't ever allow chance and circumstances to dictate for you how to live your life. One of the founding fathers of America, Benjamin Franklin, says, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Therefore, God has given us these 24 hours, literal day, in each day for us to plan well and use it in such a way that things must work out fine. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 16, Apostle Paul says that we need to walk circumspectly 
not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Circumspectly means to walk strictly, accurately, diligently, and carefully. What this means is that you must have to follow a disciplined course. You must shun procrastination. You must do everything to time. No wonder Lucius says a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You cannot just say, I, allow, oh, I have 24 hours at my leisure, so I do things whenever I want. No, there must be time for sleeping, there must be time for resting, there must be time for work, there must be time for family, there must be time to read, there must be time even to recreate. No wonder um, Mark Levy likens this time to a bank account where you have been deposited or credited in your account, $86,400. But it says there's no carryover. You don't carry it over to the next day. You must spend this $86,400 that day. What do you need to do? You need to sit down and allocate how you use this money. And you cannot, you know, there, there's no overdraft. You cannot say, I want to draw for that of tomorrow. No. And each day, that that money is created to you. You are expected to use it for that day because when the night comes, it goes. It cannot stay for the other day. Any time lost, brothers and sisters cannot be regained. Therefore, there's a call for you and for me to make good use of our time. Next thing we need to talk about this day is privileged time. It is difficult to talk about time without talking about days of the week. You can't talk about days and time without considering the weekly gift of the Sabbath. The word of Moses continues to echo and re-echo, reminding people, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, Exodus 20, 9 and 10. Therefore, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Exodus 20, verse 8. This is a timely reminder designed to create a balance and perspective to enable us to connect to our God. It is a time to enable us to connect to our God, ourselves, our family members, and nature, and to conform to God's rhythm of time. The Jewish author, Abraham Heskel, called the Sabbath God's palace of time. No wonder he says that when the day comes, God had given us a very wonderful opportunity to use the literal 24 hours, especially on the Sabbath day, to worship him. The Sabbath to worship, friends of God, is time well spent with our Creator and Redeemer. The good news about this is that it continues even in the new earth, as recorded in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. Friends of God, Sabbath is a time to pause to renew, to restore, to be refreshed in perspective and in purpose. This day, I invite you to make our time to worship God in the beauty of his holiness. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Today, I call upon you that you come closer and have a refreshing time with your maker. A Sabbath is a time to come in with the Father. It's a time to be refreshed. It's a time to be restored. It's a time to be recreated. It's a time to have opportunity to serve God. It's a time to be readjusted. When you lost that time, you cannot regain it again. Today, you must use this time to work for the master because the night is coming when no one will be able to do any work. May the Lord bless you and grant you the grace to keep to time, to make good use of our time, especially to worship God on the Sabbath day in the beauty of his holiness. May it be well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, thank you for this message of the moment. Thank you for teaching us how to manage our time well. Thank you for giving us the opportunity 
to worship you on the Sabbath day. Help us, O oh Lord, to do that which is directed by you. That we remember to keep the Sabbath day holy so that in turn you will refresh us, you will bless us, you will recreate us, and you will draw us closer to yourself more than ever before. Thank you for hearing us. Blessed be thy holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.